Hey, I'm Austin James Jackson, a professional landscape photographer. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to resize your images before sending them in to get printed at Artbeat Studios. Now, in order to create amazing prints, resizing is an absolutely crucial step to take. By resizing your image, you add more pixels to the image, making it easy to create a larger print without having to worry about pixelation or low quality images. Now, to demonstrate how easily this can be done with even iPhone or other smartphone photos, I'm gonna be resizing this image, which was shot on my iPhone 10. It shoots images that are about 3000 by 4000 pixels, which roughly equates to about 20 by 26 inches at 150 PPI. Now that might sound like a lot, but basically just understand that this only allows me to print an image up to 20 by 26 before I'm gonna start seeing some pixelation and lower quality issues. Now, even an older cell phone can print images up to eight by 10 if the image is clean enough to start. By resizing your images, you can print as large as 40 by 60 inches. Now, proper resizing techniques essentially eliminate nearly any limitation there is for printing, even when you're shooting on an older smartphone or camera with fewer megapixels. Now, before we dive into three different ways to resize your image, I wanna take a brief moment to talk to you about the specs that you wanna aim for when printing. One common myth in the photography industry is that 300 PPI is required for a high quality looking print. The truth is 300 PPI and 150 PPI have been tested in house and there is no visible difference even with a magnification loop. 150 PPI is the proper PPI for any images being printed. Additionally, if you have lower resolution photos, 100 PPI is, is the minimum that is accepted at Artbeat which although is not the best print quality, it can still look fantastic because most wall art is viewed from at least a couple feet away. Another common photography myth surrounding printing is that a TIFF file should be submitted for printing. You need to understand that a JPEG image is gonna look exactly the same as a TIFF as long as the JPEG compression is at its highest. If you'd like, you can upload a TIFF image to Artbeat, but a JPEG image is just fine for any application. Now finally, for the professionals out there that really need to make sure their colors are matching, you need to use the Adobe RGB 1998 color space. To sum up the spec, make sure to resize your image at 150 ppi, export as a JPEG with JPEG compression at the highest setting, and use the Adobe RGB color space. Now let's jump in and look at the three different resizing options. So the first and cheapest option for resizing is called letsenhance.io. Now you can pay $12 a month if billed monthly or $9 a month if billed annually in order to get a few credits um, and upsize your images. You really need the paid membership over the free membership because it offers you upscaling much larger than what you can get with the free membership. And it also does not include a watermark. You obviously don't want the watermark for your image. So I'm gonna show you how I would upsize my photo taken from my phone, which I have sitting right here on the desktop. You can just drag and drop your photo right over, and then you can go ahead and adjust some settings. Now we want to do upscale type as photo. Then we're going to do a custom size. So we're gonna to go to width and height here, and we are going to set the width. We're gonna change this to inches, first of all, and we're gonna change the resolution to 150 pixels per inch. Now we want the width to be 40 inches and the height to be 60 inches. Now you can see that's going to adjust the print size. Don't worry if it's like 39.99, but essentially you can see this is a 40 by 60 at 150 DPI. So this is going to upsize your image. Now, as you saw, I am just upsizing this image of the tree, so I'm not gonna use it. But if you are upsizing a photo where it has a person in it, you may want to use enhanced face details. That's gonna just help make their face look a little bit better. So now we can scroll down on the side over here. We have a few options that you're not really going to need to use, but you may want to use tone enhance, especially when you're printing on metal. The tone enhance can make your image look really nice. I like to check that and then use somewhere between like 30 and 40%. Once you're done, you can go ahead and hit start processing and it will take your image a few minutes to process. Now, once you're done, you can go ahead and just click on the download button here. It's going to download to your computer. And then I always recommend opening it again, just to make sure that it looks good. I'm gonna open my downloaded image right here. And I'd like to compare it to my other image, the original right here. So I've got the original on the right, the new image on the left. So now our image on the left that we enhanced has a little bit more richness than the original image on the right. So by enhancing it, we're going to help to make this image look a little bit better when we go to print it, especially it's going to look great when we print it on metal. You can use command plus on a Mac or control plus on a PC to zoom in. 
I'm just going to zoom in to both. Now you can see how this image on our left adds a little bit of clarity, makes it a little bit more uh, enhanced. You can see how it has more pixels, so it's going to look so much better when we print it uh, than this image on the left. So super important step. You can see this software does really good. This is a really great option for people on a little more of a budget considering you can just spend $12 once up front and then you're all set. That's all you need to do. So this is a great option, but I'm going to show you guys two more options for softwares that are a little bit more advanced for people that are maybe selling their photos or people that are doing this professionally. Option number two here is Topaz Gigapixel, which depending on the day, but it normally runs about $100 for a one-time cost. Again, just drag and drop your image inside the program. You can see how it's gonna update. What I really like about this is the ability to look at your image before and after. So by default, you're gonna be in the single view when you start. I always recommend switching over to split view. That's gonna give you the best opportunities in order to look at your image for the before and after. On the left, you can see is the original. On the right is the updated. As I slide this, you can see it. Now, of course, we need to update the settings because right now it is just adjusting the image on automatic settings. I like to go to width uh, and I want my output width to be uh, 40 and I don't want that to be pixels. I want it to be inches. I want the output width to be 40 inches. Make sure you change that. That's something that a lot of people will make the mistake and they'll have pixels. Your image will come out so small and it will look terrible. You want to do inches and you want to do it in the size that you know you're going to print in. Don't just make it bigger than you need. Make it exactly the size that you need to print in. So I'm showing you 40 by 60. So I'm going to do the output width as 40. Uh, the width would need to be 60 if you had a landscape oriented photo. But since this is a up and down photo, we want the width to be 40, the height to be 60. You could adjust either one. Again, we want pixels per unit. We want it to be 150 pixels per inch. It's all we are going to need here. And then we can go ahead and make our adjustments. Now, I like to always zoom to 100%. When you're zooming at 100%, it's like you're actually looking at the picture on the wall once you've adjusted the size. This is exactly what it would look like in terms of the size when you're using it at 100%. So you always want to view at 100% or greater. Additionally, once you make your adjustments, it's nice to take a step back from your computer because right now I'm probably a two feet away from my computer. If I'm creating a 40 by 60 image, I'm usually going to be viewing that from further than two feet away. So you want to keep that in mind. Now you're going to go down uh, in Topaz Gigapixel here. I like using standard uh, most of the time for the AI model. You can try some of the other ones. Um, usually like low resolution will be good if you have a really low resolution photo from your phone. Um, but if you're shooting using like any modern smartphone, it's standard is probably going to be the way to go, but you can definitely play around with it. Now you can come down. The cool thing about this software is you can use the settings to suppress noise, remove blur and fix compression. This is just going to help to make your image look a little bit better. It's nice to have some of these features. Now you can go ahead and adjust these on your own, or I actually really just like checking this box right here, which automatically applies the settings as uh, the software sees fit. And then I can readjust from there if I wanted to do more or less, but I'm gonna check the box, let it do its automatic settings. I think that's gonna work best 99% of the time. Now I can do on the left is before, on the right is after, and I can scroll through this. Now you probably can't see a lot of change happening right now, depending on what resolution you're watching this video on. So I'm gonna zoom in just so you can see this a little bit better. Maybe not 400%, maybe 200%. Now you can see on the left is before, on the right is after as I scroll through here. So you can see just how much more detail is getting added to our photo. And like I said, this is gonna print out just like this, looking really, really nice as a 40 by 60. And I shot this on my iPhone 10. Uh, you don't have to have a crazy DSLR mirrorless camera in order to blow these photos up and have them look really nice. So once you're done here, you can go ahead and click save image. You'll have some options here. Now you can leave this in JPEG here. You want to make sure the quality is at maximum. Make sure it's at 10. You can adjust the file name if you would like. Now we want to change this off of sRGB. We want to change it to Adobe RGB. Then you can go ahead and hit save and let that image load out and save. And then you can upload that straight to Artbeat's website. Now our last option here is on one resize AI. Right now I'm using the 2023 version, but depending on when you watch this video, you may have a more updated version. Again, just drag and drop your photo in there. And then you can go ahead and make some adjustments. This one's really easy to use. You just go down on the right side here. 
First things first, I want to adjust the photo size. Again, we want the resolution to be 150 pixels per inch. Make sure it's per inch, not per centimeter. Then change this to inches if it's set to pixels. Again, you definitely want inches. You don't want centimeters, millimeters, or pixels. You want inches. Then we're going to adjust this to 40, and it should automatically snap to basically 60, you can see. So that is just perfect there. Now, essentially what we want to do here, we can go down, we can apply some noise reduction, um, but I generally don't do this. If you do need noise reduction, you can go ahead and check this box and it'll apply a little bit of noise reduction. Otherwise, just go down to sharpening and check this box. Make sure there's a blue circle. Again, click 100 so that we zoom in to 100% on the image. And I always like using the print preset. I think it looks really nice, especially for metal prints, but really for any kind of print. This is just going to set up a preset to where it does progressive sharpening at an amount of 50, detail of 70, and a threshold of zero. Now, I usually like to bring this threshold up to 10. That basically just sets the threshold for what is and is not being sharpened. Then we can adjust the detail. I like to bring the detail all the way up to 100. And then from there, I just adjust the amount as I see fit. You can see with 100 sharpening, we've got before and we've got after. But 100 sharpening might be a little more than I need for this, so I might do a little bit less. But you can just slide this until it's at a place that you want. And to be honest, on this photo, about 50 looks good. But again, slide this to where you want on your own photo. Again, I recommend backing up from your screen. For a smaller print, I'm generally going to need more sharpening because I'm going to be viewing it up close. It's going to be a lot smaller. Whereas for a larger print, I probably want less sharpening because I'm going to be viewing it from further away. So keep that in mind. Now, additionally, you've got the options down here to protect shadows, highlights, and skin. On this particular photo that I'm working on, that's not going to make any difference. But if you guys are working on a photo where there is skin or there's bright sun or really dark shadows, you're going to want to bring these sliders up. Essentially, what that does is it just prevents sharpening from being in the brightest of highlights, the darkest of shadows and on skin, because you those are usually spots where you don't want to sharpen. If there's a low detailed area or skin on someone's face, you don't want to sharpen that. So you can use these sliders as you see fit. Then you can hit export whenever you're done. So we want to go down and adjust some settings here. Again, JPEG is totally fine. 100 on the quality. Make sure it's 100 on the quality. That's super crucial. And then you want to make sure your profile is Adobe RGB 1998. You don't need to adjust any of these options down here because you've already done that. You can simply just go ahead and put it in a subfolder right now. It's just going in the print subfolder in my desktop. I can go ahead and hit export whenever I am done and let that image load out. Now, once we've got that photo, I've got it right here in this print folder here. We're going to go over to Artbeat's website. I'm going to click Create Order. Then I can just drag and drop the file. Super easy to drag and drop just like that. It'll upload. Um, and once it is done uploading, we're going to click Select and Continue. Now, if you want to change the print medium, go up to Select Product, Adjust Between Metal, Acrylic, Canvas, or Paper. For the sake of this example, I'm going to show you guys on Metal, on White Gloss. Uh, we've already uploaded the photo. For Size and Crop, you can do a custom shape if you wanted here, uh, but I am just going to do the standard uh, rectangle. Like I said, 40 by 60. I'm going to go down, I'm going to check the 40 by 60 box, um, and then I'm going to go to Options. So you can go ahead and throw a mount on there if you want, or a frame for the sake of this example. Let's just pick silver aluminum. You can see it appears right here on the preview. You can scroll down. You can adjust the production time for three or one day guarantee. Additionally, you have the choice for some image enhancement. You can do gallery quality, or you can replace the cleat with a wire hanger. Check any of those boxes if you want. Otherwise, after that, you are free to kind of view your image, see how it would look. I think it looks pretty good. And last step would be to add to the cart. Now, just like that, your iPhone or other smartphone photo can be printed as large as 40 by 60 and it'll come out looking absolutely stunning. With proper resizing techniques, you don't need to let your native image size prevent you from making a really nice large print. Of course, these resizing techniques still work exactly the same with drones, DSLR, or mirrorless cameras with a lot larger sensors. And ideally, you will be resizing all your images to their proper size before printing for the best quality print. If you have any questions about the resizing process, don't hesitate to reach out to the team at Artbeat through the contact us form on the website or by directly emailing support at artbeatstudios.com. Thank you so much for watching.